For the fourth consecutive year, the Southwind Girls cross-country team is heading back to Fort Dodge in the uh, state meet coming up this weekend. Kevin Carney and Scott Conway, the Warrior Brain Trust, uh, joining us. And uh, Kevin, we'll start with you. Uh, another uh, trip to uh, Des Moines uh, for the girls. Uh, what's made this one uh, a special group to work with? Um, I think some of it, um, I don't know, I guess a couple of things. One, um, I think it's kind of been a fun year from the standpoint of uh, we graduated such a, a really good group of seniors last year. I think, um, I, you know, not, I, I don't want to say that people didn't think we were going to be, have a very good team, but I think people definitely probably thought, Oh, well, you know, it's going to be a lot of rebuilding. Um, and so it's kind of fun to see um, how, I don't know how quickly we had a lot of different girls just really step up and step into different roles. And um, we, we kind of suspected we could be competitive team by the end of the year. Um, but they've really done a, a good job of, um, you know, kind of exceeding our expectations in that regard all along, right off the bat. Um, they really worked well together um, and, you know, helped our, uh, our upperclassmen really helped, um, Josie T. Scudder in particular really helped our freshmen um, kind of come into their own way ahead of schedule um, of what we thought. So it's just kind of fun to, you know, sort of we've had sort of the expectations over the last few years because of the kids we had. And so a lot of them graduated and to see this group just kind of pick right up and, and carry on with it pretty quickly is, is a lot of fun. Got that's something that obviously just doesn't happen. What do you credit it? What do you credit that to? Um, I think it's a matter of, um, you know, kids really buy into the program, uh, but they do. I mean, they they really put their individual goals uh, behind team goals, I think, is that, um, you know, whatever it takes to make the team better, they're willing to do. And so when you have a group of kids that are willing to do that, uh, who aren't out there for the headlines, who are out there to help support their teammates, make their teammates better. You know, that that's what's going to make a team be able to do what this girls team has done and and uh, teams that we've had in the past. And Kevin, now uh, you brought up uh, Josie T. Skater. She gets to run in her fourth uh, state cross-country meet uh, coming up this weekend. Pretty big accomplishment there. How key has she been in uh, kind of setting the way uh, for this uh, team this year? Uh, absolutely probably the key <laughs> to be honest um she really like i said she really did a, a fantastic job in a leadership role on the team um you know like i said over the last few years we've had you know um several of the best leaders and best teammate kind of people we've ever had and there was you know four or five of them at a time and so um you know josie right away was able to kind of take over that role and then um, you know, in addition to her as well, um, Aubrey Whitley and Josie Tollefsrud, um, who are our eighth and ninth runner, um, they've also done a really good job as seniors and just have an experience of being on the team. Um, you know, uh, like I said, and like Scott said, the just that mentality of it's the team that matters, not the individual goal. Um you know, Josie T. Scudder is one who really kind of did that right off the bat with helping our freshmen learn how to race um, smart races and, and things like that, as opposed to just going out and doing her own thing. Um, so, yeah, it's it's made a huge difference to have the, the seniors we've had on our team this year. I, I think the other thing, though, too, is because our high schoolers practice with our junior high kids, um, you know, like, for example, Aubrey and Josie Tallstrud you know, they're helping junior high kids learn how to do workouts. They're helping junior high kids learn how to do runs. I mean, and so when you have that all the way through, I think that also factors in our team success. And Scott, uh, you bring up that point. Uh, I know as coaches, uh, you guys set the uh, training schedule, the planning and everything like that. But when you can be a student athlete led team, that's all uh, that much more impressive. And that goes to selling kids uh, the ways to success uh, even more than uh, you guys' leadership uh, can from time to time. Is that a fair thing to say? I, I would say that's a very fair thing to say. I I would love to think, and I actually I think this would be true, I would think that we could hand the kids the training schedule 
And outside of this year where the heat played a factor and we had to kind of adjust, uh, we wouldn't have to show up to practice. I, I think I think they could run it knowing what pace, what rest, and, and we wouldn't have to be there. We wouldn't have to whether, wonder whether or not they did it either. Yeah. <laughs> we more often than not, our our main uh, our main contribution is preventing them from doing more than they should. <laughs> yeah. I would say. Not a bad position for you guys to be in. Uh, Kevin, was there a moment this year that you thought this team could uh, be a special group? Um, trying to think. Yeah. Um, I don't, I, I guess the, probably the main thing that I'm hoping the moment's still coming, to be honest, oh. because, um, everybody's been doing really well, but we've been kind of doing it in the face of adversity every single week. Um, every week we have someone, <laughs> it seems like, that, you know, we're kind of cobbled together a little bit where someone's struggling with some particular injury or illness or, you know, isn't a hundred percent. Um, and so I guess the moment is, it just seems like every week, even though our team is not a hundred percent, somehow, some way, every time we run, the team improves, even though we have individuals every week who are having a rough go of it for whatever reason, someone else steps up or, you know, takes a bigger role. Um, so I guess that would kind of be the moments I'm noticing that uh, make me pretty optimistic where it's like, no matter what gets thrown their way, um, week in and week out, this team is finding a way to improve and actually get better, even though, we really haven't been a hundred percent yet. So we're kind of crossing our fingers that we might be due for, <laughs> to get everybody and we're still not there, but, um, but that also gives us a little bit of um, confidence from the standpoint of, well, we haven't been a hundred percent all year. So we're kind of ready to, to overcome that again, hopefully. And Scott, you brought it up uh, earlier on in the season. This was probably as hot of a start to a cross country season as there's been uh, in quite some time. And everyone uh, in our neck of the woods and really statewide had to deal with that. How much did you have to adjust when uh, sometimes you were training for a meet that ended up not happening? Yeah, that that was by far. Uh, I'd have to go back. I can't think of a year where where we had to change more. Um, you know, and then on top of that, because of dryness, you lose meats because the course is too dry. I mean, that's something that, uh, that I've never been thrown at before. Um, and so we had to do an awful lot of, you know, and a lot of times we would plan ahead. I mean, there were certain meats where you just knew it probably wasn't possible that they were going to have it. So then looking at, you know, what days are optimal for doing workouts, um, you know, making sure we had water on the trail. Uh, so, so besides the injuries, we were throwing an awful lot of curveballs that way. And, um, you know, and that's, what's nice having both of us together is we can look at each other and say, what are you thinking? And a lot of times we're on the same page and it's just nice to have someone else saying, yeah, this is probably not a good day to do this. Let's, you know, shift and do something else and, and adapt and adopt and move forward. And Kevin, you mentioned the challenges that you've had this year, but uh, last week at the uh, state qualifier at Central Springs, you ended up with four of the top 14 runners in that one. Uh, did you feel that was your best meet of the year at the uh, right time of the year? Uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I, I'd i have to look a little more carefully, but I really think um, just, yeah, the state qualifying meet was our best meet. The conference meet was our second best meet our meet was our third best meet. I mean, kind of each, like I said, each, each week's been a little better. And um, yeah, the, the, the state qualifying meet, they ran very well. They ran smart races, um, competed hard. Um, you know, again, we had, we had a couple of people who were definitely not a hundred percent. But then, you know, two or three other kids just kind of elevated and did better than, we kind of really anticipated them doing. And so that kind of, you know, one person, you know, goes backwards one step and, but 
we get two or three steps up from somebody else, you know, some other kids. So, um, yeah, it was, a, it was a, it was a very good performance. Of course, the girls going to be there as a team and, uh, Scott, uh, Abe, uh, Conway going to be there as a, uh, boys competitor individually, uh, talk about Abe's this season, uh, what made, uh, things click for him and, uh, get to for, for him to get to Fort Edge. Uh, I mean, when you look at Abe as a freshman to now, he, he's shown tremendous amount of improvement. Um, you know, a number of people have come up to him and said, you know, when you were a freshman, I don't think I would have ever seen this coming. Mm -hmm. um, but it was something where, uh, like, after his freshman year, kind of going into his sophomore year, um, he decided that he wanted to get better at it. He didn't know how good he could get. And then I think it really started to click actually towards the end of last cross country season, uh, I thought our boys had a very good state qualifying meet. Uh, we fell short, but we were competitive. We put ourselves in a position where someone didn't have a great day. Maybe we could snap up a spot. Uh, and he ran a great race that day. And I think from that moment forward, he decided to put in the work. And after the season, he, he ran until it got too kind of crappy out to run. Uh, but then he lifted, and then this summer he put in a, a, a really big summer. Um, maybe not tons of runs, but high-quality runs. And, and I think that's really what's made the difference. Of course, Kevin, uh, you guys had the uh, state qualifier at Central uh, Springs last week, and then you compete again uh, here this Friday at uh, Fort Dodge. Uh, how do you uh, manage this week of uh, getting uh, your kids ready for uh, as good of a day as they possibly can have uh, come uh, Friday? Uh probably number one thing is just don't screw anything up <laughs> at this point. Um, there, there really isn't any, I mean, it's not a week where you're training to get better. Um, basically you're training to feel good, uh, at the end of the week. So, you know, everything we do is what we've always done, but we do a little less of it. Um, we do some stuff that's a little quicker, but you know, nothing crazy. Um, you know, just managing, you know, some of the kids who have been banged up or sick, just don't do much of anything, to be honest. Um, you know, so a lot of it's just, um, kind of maintenance and making sure people feel physically as good as they can. Um, and then just kind of mentally, you know, just, um, we talk to them about what the state meet's going to be like and, um, you know, just focusing, you know, making sure they're, um, they're focused on the, the things that we kind of preach at them all year long, as far as how to approach the meet and things like that. And Scott, I know, uh, from being used to talking to you guys, uh, this time of year, uh, your approach to the state meet is always getting kids ready to say, you know what, some of you are going to have a really good day. Some of you guys going to have an average day. Someone might not have that good of a day based on what you've dealt with, especially on the girls side, uh, are you ready for that from a, from a uh, approach uh, to this state meet uh, perspective? Yes, I, I think so. I'm, I mean, we've been doing it all year long, like Coach Carney's already said. But, you know, the other thing that I think our, our girls really did a good job of is every single meet, you know, there was something we asked them to work on and, and they got better at that every single time. Um, and so, again, you know, all season long, they've realized there, there's things that we haven't done great and we can get better at. And all of them have had off races and have bounced back. So I, I think all of our kids are pretty ready for whatever comes. And, and you know, they're going to give their best effort regardless of what kind of day it is. But I also think they have an awful lot of confidence that one of their teammates is going to have a good day or a great day. Um, and that allows them to say, okay, I'm going to still do my part and, you know, okay. So maybe I was hoping for 65th, I'm sitting 72nd, but I'm going to do my best to get 70th. All right, uh, Kevin and uh, Scott, always fun to talk to you guys uh, this time of year. Uh, congratulations, congratulations on another great season of Southwind uh, cross country and hope it finishes in style come Saturday. Best of luck to, or Friday, I should say, best of luck to you in uh, Fort Dutch. Well, thank you, and we thank wish you. all the local teams all the best of luck as well. Scott Conway, Kevin Carney, the Southwind girls there for the fourth year in a row, and Abe Conway competing on the boys' side.